Hello, all. Welcome to the web presentation of Finding Meaning in the Mass. Today we're going to talk about a few different strategies for dealing with the huge influx of information that we've all found ourselves in today. So without further ado, our host today is Bobby Schrott. Um, he is the segment leader for Global Research Solutions here at LexisNexis. Um, he, in a past life, was a librarian and is still very involved in the field. Uh, Bobby, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thanks, Mary. Um, and you can hear me? Yep, sound good. Oh, perfect. Great. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining this call today. So let me get started here. And this conversation really is anchored in research LexisNexis has been doing for a number of years around what the characteristics of successful information centers, successful information providers are. Um, and we've done field surveys, we've done one-on-one -on -one interviews, we've done a lot of focus groups at trade shows, in our offices with customers. And we've come to a pretty clear understanding of what we see as the four key characteristics of very successful information centers in the corporate, legal, government, and academic space, and we are seeing a lot of convergence across those markets, and we're seeing really successful and very happy and satisfied information professionals all really engaging and aligning along these four key axes. Um, and that's really shifting from being sort of a data and answer provider to moving to much more of a consultant and thinking about you know, what the organization's real drivers are, goals are, and making sure that services are really um, consultative, they're two-way, um, and they're much more engaged. Um, so there's a lot less passivity, there's a lot less waiting, um, and there's really a lot more proactive, um, thoughtful engagement with all different kinds of users across the organization. Um, similar to that is really you know, leveraging the particular talents and skills of information professionals to focus more on higher value and much more organizationally strategic solutions. Um, so, you know, we, we certainly see, um, you know, fairly simple things like very rudimentary news searching or looking up an address. Those are a lot of functions that are, are being pushed back to the end user to, to do by themselves. And, as information professionals come to their organization with, again, a, a much more sophisticated understanding of content, of metadata, of deliverables, um, and they're much more comfortable working with very complex data sets, we're seeing, again, a, a much more satisfied and much more thriving information landscape when it's really you know, taking the more challenging, the more complex, and the much more strategic work and pushing a lot of the rote um, you know, one, two, three answers back down to the end users. Um, and the final two um, really do support um, these, uh, the, the first two. The first is really, again, leveraging the skills that information professionals bring to the organization in helping to better manage uh, data. Um, and really this huge volume of content that is flowing into organizations from the open web, from social media, from aggregators. And, you know, there, there, there's such a volume and there's such a velocity behind the content that's coming in that it really does take someone with a, with a pretty keen understanding of what the high-value, unique content assets are um, and how they should be de deployed across the organization how they should be integrated, how they should be delivered, um, to really manage that flow. Otherwise, organizations are really overwhelmed. And when we see organizations that lack an information center, have no information professionals, we really see them drowning in data. But when we talk to federal agencies and law firms and companies that have a strong information center, a strong information professional um, on board, we see them being much more thoughtful um, and much less overwhelmed by the, the amount of data flowing into the organization. And finally, this leads often to 
really the emerging centrality of dashboard and analytic tools um, across um, organizations. So we see information professionals, again, thinking about how content should be mined, how content should be packaged, and how content should be delivered. And we're seeing a lot more deployment of dashboards and analytic tools. So, you know, thinking about moving from an information professional to a consultant, there's a lot that has to be taken into account. Um, and so information professionals, again, bring a really unique eye um, to the organization, being able to manage proprietary applications, software, mobile, open web content, um, open public APIs, but also really being able to align those tools back to you know, more strategic information intensive professionals in the organization, but also making the same tools and the same content available to maybe novice, less sophisticated, um, end users who still need robust um, external data to do their job, um, but may not be as comfortable with fairly sophisticated tools. So again, we're seeing information professionals thinking about all the applications that are flowing in, how it's going to drive organizational success, but then managing that portfolio so that users have tools that really map to their ability, map to their need, and again, get them, get them to um, addressing the key organizational goals, and they're not spending a lot of time training and learning and mastering data that may not be of strategic importance for the organization. And this is um, you know, sort of our view of where we've seen the market move, and certainly this is how LexisNexis has been managing our strategy over you know, the past five years, is to really think about how all of the, the key inputs to information literacy, to knowledge, um, to insights, to ideas, and to answers are, are really trending across all the different kinds of markets and different kinds of organizations we're serving. And we're seeing a real shift away from you know, very rigid information silos um, and moving away from things like platforms and search, desktops, um, events, focused research um, to really a much more, again, sophisticated but nimble um, deployment of content feeds, a much stronger focus on integrating content through XML toolkits, through APIs, and a much deeper appreciation of focus on workflows, on analysis, on answers, um, and a shift you know, more toward predictive research um, and alerts so that you know current awareness is you know certainly far more critical for a lot of our end users than traditional search has been in the past. Um, and so again, where information professionals have been really thinking about how do we create nimble, robust feeds, get it into our systems where our users are working, and align it to their core um, roles, their core information needs, we're seeing again a real sense of thriving. Um, a real sense of satisfaction, and we're also seeing a level of investment um, at those companies that we don't see where information professionals may still be trying to do sort of a ready reference model um, and focusing really on search with, a, with an eye toward you know, a high level of complexity that, again, a lot of end users may not have an appreciation for. Um, you know, data data sources and the explosion in the volume and again the velocity of data is really overwhelming everyone in any industry today. Um, we hear this over and over and over again from our customers that they don't need more sources, they need the right sources, they need the best sources. Um, and so certainly we're seeing information professionals do a very good job of pushing back on the numbers game. And really forcing companies like LexisNexis to think about our overall content strategy so that, again, everything we're delivering to customers has value um, and demonstrable value um, because information professionals are not just dealing with content coming from LexisNexis. They're also dealing with other open web content, with social media feeds, and with the volume of internal data that's being created. So again, they have to be very careful about um, giving too much too often to everyone so that no one can find the answer um, 
develop the insights or innovations that really, again, are going to drive their organization. And another thing that we're seeing information professionals do a very good job on is educating end users on the relative value of different kinds of content. And certainly, social media is one that's very important for almost every kind of organization today. Um, it's, it's a key driver of reputation, um, but it's also a key driver of noise and irrelevance. But a lot of you know, folks coming out of college, um, younger users, are very focused and oft often fixated on social media to the exclusion of other more critical data sources. Um, and one of the things that you know, I've seen, again, information professionals do very well is tell that story that, yes, social media is important, but legislative data, company intelligence, legal materials, public records, news are all equally important and help tell that complete story. Um, and certainly if we look at certain kinds of, of issues, um, you know, Ebola being a, a very good example, you know, medical journals and other more diagnostic and scientific data often are a good early warning of a change in that, and social media is often a laggard. And these are really good lessons, again, to pass back to our end users to remember that all their answers should not be coming from a single source of information, but they should also really be working with the librarians to make sure that they're not getting too much information from all the different channels flowing through the organization today. Which leads to really the rise in the centrality of dashboards, analytic tools, report templates. And we're seeing really interesting work being done again in federal agencies, in law firms, at universities, and in corporations in trying to consolidate all their data into central dashboards that have much more sophisticated analytics and packaging so that it's easy to look at mass amounts of data, understand what's happening, identify key trends, identify key drivers, um, watch competition, watch stakeholders in, in the business, and then deliver it very easily and seamlessly to anyone within the organization and in some cases outside of the organization. And what we're seeing with these dashboards is, is a couple of key characteristics here. A, a strong diversity of content. So again, they're not, you know, successful information professionals never rely on one kind of content. And we're seeing some really interesting work being done in looking at, say, legislative filings um, as a surrogate to news content where um, a lot of news, news organizations have cut back on their state house coverage um, or their coverage of the courts. Um, and so they're really thinking about where, where can they fill the gaps um, where traditional providers may not be delivering answers today. Um, a much bigger focus on personalization so that dashboards are configurable um, almost to the department and individual level at the industry um, and the role. Um, they tend to be much more anticipatory where they're successful. So they're watching for what's immature, what's nascent, and what's new, what's moving into their organization space as opposed to just telling the story of where we are today. Um, and then certainly a, a stronger alignment to organizational goals and a very clear focus on systems and not tasks. So really thinking about the user's workflow where they're interacting with data, how they're consuming data, how they want to deliver data, and less of a focus on the fact that a user may need an annual report or they may need an industry report. But when they need that annual report, they're typically in a, in a fairly unique kind of solution, and they're in a very unique um, point within their research. So always aligning back to the workflow helps drive the right information to the user at the right time um, of need. So as we move toward you know, sort of what LexisNexis has been doing um, over the past years with a really strong focus on you know, managing our content but investing in much more sophisticated in-product analytic solutions we started with this issue around order from noise. Um, you know, we have a lot of content. We have a lot of incredible content. 
it's almost too much for a lot of users um, to really manage. And so as we looked at the volume of our news content, um, for example, coming through, you know, we have over three you know, million documents coming in on a daily basis, but coming in from multiple countries in multiple languages. It's very hard for a user um, and really impossible for anyone to read all of that, to watch all of that in any easy way without some sort of advanced, you know, broad, deep data um, analytics on top of it. So we sat down about two years ago and said we need to create better order and we need to give users a much easier way to look at the breadth and depth of our content. So they may need to look back 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Um, they may need to look forward um, over the next couple of months. And we need to give them tools to create order um, out of all of that, what feels like noise right now, but is really a lot of value and a lot of very keen insights that are going to help those organizations succeed. So we start very much like an information professional does with the broad media landscape. And when we look at the content that we're managing and curating right now and delivering back to our customers, there's a lot in there and a lot of it's highly unique. So organizational data from corporate affiliations or SEC filings, industry reports, market research reports, news, social media, broadcasts. And that could be transcripts, and that could be video. And we started to think, well, what's the purpose of a lot of that content? Um, and this is where information professionals really helped us formulate a strong view on why all of these content sets are really critical. So, you know, there's the socialization aspect. There's the brand building aspect. There's the pure information. There's entertainment. There's persuasion. There's warning, so sanctions lists. Um, politically exposed persons list. Um, and information professionals really helped us think about, you know, which of those categories were really important to them, but then why those contents, why those content sets were critical um, in terms of their intent and how they were helping information professionals socialize new ideas across their organization, inform their users of, of new trends um, in their market space, or warn their stakeholders of problems with partners, um, alliance uh, partners, competitors, um, or in the broader um, legislative, regulatory, statutory landscape. So this is really where we're starting, is trying to make sense of this really rich, very diverse, but often overwhelming media landscape, and then taking the next level, and again, this is where information professionals always do a great job, it's helping us think about what are all of those context dependencies that we need to take into account when we're thinking about analytics, when we're thinking about dashboards, when we're thinking about packaging data? Um, you know, relative value. Um, different organizations are going to value different kinds of content um, differently. Different stakeholders are going to require a different level of detail or a different kind of content. So there are some folks who are visual learners and they want an, a video clip. There are other people who want charts, they want graphs, or there are people who want to read the entire article. Um, organizational goals are really variant across um, you know, our landscape today. And so a law firm is going to have a very different strategy than a federal agency. The economy is very cyclical. Some industries do well um, on a downturn. Some industries do well at an upturn. Um, market position is always relative to each particular company we're working with. And, you know, different people on staff have different levels of competency. And so these were the, the key sort of context dependencies that information professionals told us they were managing to. And out of that conversation, um, a really critical insight um, was, was heard for us um, is that People don't necessarily want just a box that data flows through and every company in every country, in every market of every size is getting the exact same chart. Um, what we heard over and over and over again is that these context dependencies are driving a requirement that dashboards, that analytics, and that report templates 
be highly customizable, really down to the individual user level, so that what they're delivering resonates and has value and is, again, driving the organization toward its end goal. So this is really the foundation we started with when we moved into a much broader analytics strategy. Um, and ultimately, we came down to listening to everything, uncovering what, what matters. And we start with our data, we move to um, analysis, and then we really can think about building out those dashboards that are, again, nimble, configurable, and are really delivering high you know, personal value to end users within the organization. And sort of the quote we, we used as our inspiration as we were building out this portfolio is a quote from Jack Welch where he said, it's like a dinner party. You bring as many intellects together as you can and then take the best ideas out of each. The leader who gets the most ideas from the most sources will have the most success. And this really resonated with us as we thought about what IPs were telling us, um, is bring as much as you can to the table um, and then let us really manage and curate and develop the particular implementation so that we're getting the best ideas to drive the greatest organizational success. Um, so as part of our, our broad strategy, we, we looked pretty aggressively at the market, um, and we made a, a significant acquisition last year with Moreover. Um, one of the things we really liked about Moreover was their, their focus on dashboards and analytics and the strength of their underlying technology um, in terms of content enrichment, post search, filters and facets, and the ability for users to have a really great level of control over what content they're utilizing, how they're parsing it, and then how they're deploying it and sharing it across the organization. And here what I'm showing you is an example of a news desk um, dashboard, um, and this is on the general election in, in UK. And you can see that this is giving users a really very complex view, um, leveraging a lot of data, so the ability to look over time by share of voice, um, extracting key, key people mentioned across the entire corpus of data, key topics showing up, as well as key locations mentioned. Um, so this is really a nice, broad, multi-dimensional view of you know, a campaign between two um, parties in, um, in one country. But again, it, it's given users the ability to really build a dashboard that tells a story and allows them to see how things are going to impact their business, how they need to align geographically, um, people they may, may need to engage, um, how coverage is trending and how that could be impacting other messages in the, in the media today, and really who's capturing the press's attention and in the case of social media that's feeding through who's really capturing the popular imagination. So with, um, with Newsdesk, what we, we've done here is develop an in-product dashboard that allows users to save queries and then map any of their queries, and they can combine multiple queries into very sophisticated, highly customizable charts and graphs um, for ongoing media intelligence and current awareness. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of examples, and each of them slightly different. Um, so in this case, you'll see that we're able to extract the companies mentioned in there, the volume of their coverage over time, and then show users the, um, the, the full text of the article if they want to dig a little bit deeper. And this is that kind of um, alignment that we heard so much from information professionals that there's a lot of folks who just want a picture. They want a chart. They want to know how many times something is mentioned. But there's also an equal number of folks across the organization who want to know what's um, the detail, what's happened. They want to read the full text article. They want to validate it. They want to dig a little bit deeper. And so with Newsdesk, we've been able to build in, you know, tools that allow users to explore you know, based on time, based on knowledge, based on interest, very easily and very simply. And then this becomes a very broad common body of knowledge across the organization. Um, 
And here's another example where we're able to chart um, by country again, um, share of voice, and to look at sentiment in this case. So how positively or how negatively are your brands, your company, your competitors being treated in the market? Um, and this is, again, really helping to tell that story about the value wedge and how you're different than other folks. But it's a critical um, benchmark, um, and it's a, it's a really unique capability that moreover brought to LexisNexis that's allowed us to really tell a story about how reputation is being shaped and to do much deeper, much more sophisticated comparative um, sentiment analysis across your market. Here's an example of what we call um, a command center. And this combines both feeds um, in a widget. So this is really, a, again, a very sophisticated dashboard where your feeds are populating through. You can see headlines updating as new content's flowing through. And it can be customized by topic, by content type, uh, or by publisher, or by entity. Um, and so again, a lot of flexibility and a lot of really interesting ways to start to craft a dashboard so that it really does speak to what the end user actually needs to know on a daily basis. So the ability to call out a specific publication um, that's critical um, in terms of driving reputation or is really influential in your market space um, or an organization that may uh, have regulatory authority over you or that you may actually um, have some, some control over or membership in, um, or at the topical level, being able to look at what's happening with fairly broad concepts, um, again, in an easy, digestible way, but then to transfer all of that content over into a much more sophisticated dashboard that includes not, again, just the news feeds that are coming through, but the weather, Twitter conversations, um, conversations that are happening within the organization. And so this is an example of where an information professional sat down and not only took really strong third-party content and created really relevant, mm. very sophisticated data feeds, but they were able to add a lot of maybe ancillary, secondary information into a single place so the users are consuming not only kind of knowledge about whether it's raining when they go to a meeting, but they're able to track coverage of, of the client that they may be meeting with later in the afternoon and really drive all their users to, again, a central dashboard that's populated by very robust, very diverse, very um, complex data, but um, also gives them all of the day-to-day -day, you know, working knowledge that they may need um, to engage with their colleagues through chats, or to watch what's happening in social media um, as those conversations are evolving. So another example of where LexisNexis has been investing is with Nexus.com. Um, over the past couple of years, we have developed a very sophisticated analytic capability in Nexus. Um, it shares a lot of characteristics similar to what we see with, moreover, and their news desk product, but it has the added ability of being able to work across different content sets in Nexus, but also to run analytics as far back in time as LexisNexis um, has coverage. So really the model with Newsdesk is ongoing media awareness, media intelligence, and current awareness. With Nexus, it's, it's the ability to take deep topical research, company research, people research, and chart and graph that coverage over time, also with the ability to track um, as that topic evolves um, in the next couple months, next couple of years, and build out a very deep well of knowledge around how, how companies, how people, how industries have evolved over time, and then seeing what, what's new and moving into that space. So in the Nexus model, it's really as simple as executing a query and then analyzing your results. And once your results are um, pulled over into our analytic dashboard, again, we're giving users the ability to create custom charts. So this is not about three templates 
that um, force everyone's workflow and everyone's unique needs into a single kind of static chart. But really asking the question of, <clears throat> you know, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? What do you want to analyze? So in this case, the ability to take all of your search terms and compare um, their, their volume, their velocity over time, the ability to compare mm -hmm. by source, by company index term, or to utilize um, additional um, analytic options. And a lot of those are built off our um, enrichment with our smart indexing, so the ability to take companies, industries, subjects that are mentioned um, in those articles, leverage that content enrichment uh, for charting and graphing purposes. And so users, again, have the ability to not only sort of pick the topics that they're, that they're tracking, but the look and feel and, you know, the metrics that, that they're utilizing. So in these cases, you know, We've given users a variety of different charts and the ability to chart um, in different time increments, so by month, by quarter, um, to show volume, to show average, to show share of um, voice across the entire content set. So very flexible, very customizable, but very sophisticated analytics that really do leverage the breadth of our content, but also, you know, this very sophisticated back end of data enrichment that we're providing as part of our core offering to our customers. Um, so here's an example um, looking at four candidates um, running uh, for president today, Bernie Sanders, Ted Cruz, Martin O'Malley, um, and Ben Carson, and the ability to chart, in this case, um, their coverage over a one-week period. And it's very interesting how you can see um, you know, Bernie Sanders and um, Ted Cruz kind of clustering together, and then Martin O'Malley um, and Ben Carson clustering together toward the bottom. So immediately you're starting to see how what folks who may be considered second-tier candidates um, in two different parties tend to be clustering close to each other. So there's a, there's a, there's a relative share of voice that each of them um, is capturing, and you can very quickly, by hovering on the chart, see the number of articles that are in any particular day here. Um, and then you're also able, again, to see the full text of the article, when it was published, where it came from. And we do provide a direct link to all the article level metadata. And this is, again, getting to this really big challenge that information professionals have always had. How do we build something that's custom? that we can share across the organization easily that's going to tell a strong story, but that really, again, speaks to a lot of different kinds of users' needs, abilities, um, and preferences. And so by starting with the dashboard, starting with the chart, we're showing the answer, and we're letting everyone understand exactly what's happening, how these four compare, how they may be similar to each other, how they may be a little bit different, but again, for a more sophisticated um, or more diligent user, they have access to the full text and they have access to the full metadata for each individual article populating it. And they can then take that metadata and start to develop even more sophisticated, more custom um, analytics. So we really see this tool in Nexus as the launch pad to a much more sophisticated, much more robust interaction with fairly complex and fairly large data sets that become easily digestible but scale across user ability and departmental need. Um, and here's another example of the kinds of data that we're able to deliver through this new platform. And this is an example of exporting all of that data into a simple Excel spreadsheet with your title, with your date, publication, page number, byline, word count, which one of your search terms appear in each of those articles and a direct link to that individual article. Um, and then there's a second tab here where we show day by day the number of hits each one of those um, search terms um, captured for that particular moment. So again, we're not just giving a chart or a graph, but we're providing raw data for deeper, maybe more complex analytics 
in your own homegrown solutions. These uh, permalinks to individual documents can be shared across your SharePoint sites, your portals, your intranets. Um, they can be embedded in documents. Again, it enables a lot more discovery and a much more sophisticated way to leverage our data without downloading mass amounts of individual articles and mm -hmm. distributing those across the organization. And here's an example, some examples of how we started to then build out much more sophisticated apps um, and other sorts of dashboards that again meet very particular um, company needs. So in this case, the ability to track um, you know, key topical areas by industry, by issue, top global stories. So here's the example of industry where it starts to cascade out by key industry topic and then um, individual article. Um, and this is really pulled again from the analytics and the dashboards that are sitting out there. Um, here's an example where stories are flowing through in a much simpler tile manner, but users have the ability to, co to comment and to share that content across the organization. So again, information professionals are able to curate the right content, create very strong queries, and then push that out to the end users. And the end users have a greater level of control in terms of the kinds of conversations they're driving with the story, but also their ability to syndicate with other you know, stakeholders, other interested parties in the organization without a lot of um, intervention by information professionals. And it's, it's freeing up time, but again, it's making the content much more nimble and much more proactive and much more really a part of the organizational infrastructure. Um, and here's an example where um, video is popping right up. Um, and this is now, again, something that we've, we've been focusing on a lot um, to go from a very simple story to the actual video itself. Um, here's another example from Grant Thornton of a different kind of newsletter where we're getting a nice little summary. Um, and we're actually calling out all of our um, enrichment for companies and people affiliated with the article. So, Users can very quickly browse the source, see a quick summary of the article, but also understand what competitors, what partners, um, what subsidiaries, and what individuals are showing up in that article, and whether that's really relevant to their particular needs. And this is a really, I think, a really great way um, and a really great example of, of information professionals thinking you know, about metadata and making it really meaningful for end users without really ever having to say metadata or making end users sit through conversations about metadata management, content enrichment. And if users want to click through, they have a direct link to that individual story. Similarly, when we get to slightly more complex um, and much more robust um, deliverables, here's an example where um, an information professional, in this case, is pulling out key facts um, from the articles that have been um, delivered through an alert over the course of the year. Um, and so they're able to give a nice set of headlines, and that's often what senior executives want to see. You know, what are the four or five things I want to know? And then integrating the charts um, with the sentiment analysis um, and the ability to uh, look at month by month how coverage is trending and tracking over time. And on a single page, really telling the story of the state of the business um, by leveraging you know, the very complex, very unique data analytic um, and content feed that LexisNexis has been bringing to the customer. Another example here where, again, we see key facts, but we're seeing some different chart configuration here. So, how are things you know, tracking in terms of buzz all the way over time? And then how is the client, the product, brand, competitor um, skewing in terms of broad share of voice across the media um, that they're tracking? Um, and here's a very nice example where we can actually see sentiment charted um, and percentage by uh, place, um, by organization, um, and so we can see with, say, Oxfam, um, not a lot of negative coverage, 
whole lot of neutral coverage, you know, mediocre um, positive coverage, but, you know, Care Deutschland has a very significant positive share of voice um, compared to UNICEF. And so this is, again, taking the same infrastructure we've seen in a lot of slides, but turning it into a dashboard that has triggers and is really an early warning system to tell stakeholders how different organizations are being treated, what perceptions are in the market um, over time, and then looking at, again, share of voice and you know, positive versus negative sentiment. And uh, again, a much more very nice and very sophisticated little infographic that goes out once per month showing trends by region. Um, again, a lot of different very customized charts. So these are all core features of, in this case, the news desk platform. But then there, there are actually features that can be distinguished, pulled out, and then recurated, recalibrated, and delivered into very custom, very focused, but very value-rich, action-oriented um, newsletters, dashboards, um, and portals. So, you know, in summary, um, for the folks who have been LexisNexis customers or aware of us for a long time, um, you know, certainly this is our route with the Ubic, um, but we've really, over the past, years transformed from a search and data retrieval company to an analytics dashboard um, and content syndication and sharing company without really changing our key content configuration, without moving from our legacy products. Um, we're really trying to think about how we can continue to inspire, enable, and really advance information professionals as really the most critical role in any organization we're serving today. And so we're a partnership with information professionals and our conversations with them. We're really, really happy at the point we've arrived at. And we really do you know, owe a huge debt of gratitude to all the information professionals out there for really helping us rethink our business um, and align content delivery, content enrichment, um, content packaging to what really is the state of the market today. And I'll leave you with sort of where you know, we, we see, again, successful information professionals really moving is shifting from rote, lookup, focus processes, moving up the content value chain, um, really focusing on both micro and macro level opinions, um, thinking about who's really influencing and impacting their business, a deeper, deeper focus on visualization, mapping influencers, looking at their relationships, and really thinking about early warnings and awareness um, around critical issues in your business today. So I will um, stop. We have about um, 13 minutes, and I can certainly stay longer if um, if questions continue, but I will open it up um, for anyone who has any questions um, about any of this or any related topic. So for those of you on the line, um, you can hit star six on the phones, or you can chat to the host and presenter or to everyone your questions, uh, and we will get to answering those now. So we have had a few questions come in, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Um, this one came in a a while ago, um, and might be a bit of a repeat, but the question is how okay. is the metadata leveraged across this entire collection? Mm -hmm. So um, the metadata is leveraged in, in a couple of different ways. Um, so when we ingest content, um, whether it's news content or company content or legal content, we have unique um, metadata collections that, that we apply. That metadata is applied at the individual document level. So wherever we surface that document, that metadata is always available. Um, and then, you know, in the case of the, of the, the spreadsheets that we're showing, um, we're just, again, showing the metadata um, in a slightly different way, um, still tied to the article, 
but we're really giving them the view of what are those those, those key companies, key industries, key people that that individual article is about. And then when we move to analytics, we're able to take the breadth of the metadata across the entire result set and allow users to create charts and graphs and trends that leverage our metadata. And the metadata is really critical because it really gets to the aboutness of the individual article. Um, and so it allows you to find trends and topics, companies and people that may not be mentioned specifically in the, in the individual article, but that our smart indexing algorithm knows is connected to the entities, the company, or the topics that are mentioned in that particular article. Um, so I will stop, and hopefully that answered the question, but if it didn't, um, I'm certainly happy to take a follow-up um, to clarify um, that answer. I'm not getting a follow-up question, so I think you're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm, and, oh, good. I was going to say, I see we have a question um, on how we leverage content in um, different languages. Um, mm -hmm. So we, okay, we leverage content, and so um, we now have content from over 200 plus countries in about 100, um, over 150 individual languages. Um, we always do deliver the content um, to our customers as published. Um, so you know we are not translating on the fly for our customers. We're not you know impacting the meaning. Um, but one of the nice things as we build out our, our our semantic enrichment capabilities is we can often identify you know companies, people um, across languages very easily because there isn't a lot of variation. We're able to apply that metadata um, and you know that does allow users to search across um, multiple um, languages often um, and identify articles that are relevant to their key um, industries, to their company, to their uh, particular organization. Um, but you know there is always a challenge with managing non-English content. Um, search. I mean, if you're if a user is very specifically looking for an answer in a particular language. Um, it's always best to search in that particular language. Um, but our group files, um, so we have a group file in Nexus that is all news, all languages. So it does allow users to search very quickly, very easily, and seamlessly across a broad collection of, of content in any language. But again, users do have the ability to search in particular languages. We also do offer um, a language interface uh, toggle in product that allows users to set their screens um, in the language of their preference. Google Translate is built into most of our solutions. So if a user comes across an article in German and they may not have any competency in German, they do have the ability themselves to translate that um, and read it while they're um, in product, and certainly with, within the Moreover um, platform, users also have the ability to search across all of their their particular all the content um, in all the languages we have. But users can, if they only want content in a particular language, they can always select um, just that particular language and see only results um, in that language. And yeah, and I'll let um, the questioner. Uh, right back, and let me know if that answered the question. All right. Um, are there other questions? And certainly, feel free to unmute your phone. Um, you don't have to type a question if you don't um, want to. Bobby, you spoke um, a little bit about the in investment that LexisNexis has made in the two tools, Nexus and mm -hmm. NewsDesk. Mm -hmm. What's the big difference in the analytics capabilities in the two different tools? Yeah, and and, and you know, and, and thank you. That, that that's a, that's a great question. So I thank the customer a lot. Um, it's you know, analytics are even broader than NewsDesk and Nexus. So if anyone's familiar with Courtlink. 
Um, we have um, custom analytics built into to Courtlake as well. Our, in, um, our intellectual property solutions include analytic capabilities. So what we've tried to do is build um, an analytic mindset and a core set of analytic capabilities, but always make sure that the particular configuration maps back to that product and the unique content sets that sit there. And so really the, the key difference um, is with Nexus, it's both backward-looking and forward-looking, but really in, in Nexus it starts with a query um, and it allows you to search very deep across the entire archive so that um, you can trend um, from the first mention of a company or a person or a brand or an issue um, up through to today um, and create very sophisticated you know, longitudinal views on that particular topic. Um, but you can also create an alert off the analytics um, and monitor that over time, where with News Desk, it really is much more aligned toward current awareness and looking forward. So the queries are built in, in the News Desk platform um, really as a way to create ongoing deep media intelligence, media awareness capabilities to capture things as they're flowing through. And again, it's really about the product and the kinds of content that, that, that sit there. Um, with, um, with, within Nexus, um, the, the analytic capabilities can be utilized with some other content sets as well beyond news. Um, but again, it's really just about taking this core set of capabilities around analytics and designing them in a way that, that makes sense for the kinds of users we know who are using those solutions and the, and the kinds of content they're going to encounter. But again, always building that off of a shared um, perspective that becomes, I think, hopefully more, more harmonious and more unitary over time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I do not have any, oh, well. You know, I did just get one more question in. Do you see that one, Bobby? What is the updating um, alerting capabilities within Analyzer Charting? Can you add some more detail around? The yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, yes. In, so, um, in both products, um, so in so in Analyzer in Nexus, you can update hourly um, to monthly, um, and again, that is really set at the at the user preference. Um, so if you if you have a product releasing, if you're watching for a major announcement, if a case is about to um, come to a decision and you want to see um, what folks are saying, you can get hourly updates or you could get uh, daily, weekly, um, monthly updates. And um, it is the same general um, capability with NewsDesk, although generally with NewsDesk we see users um, somewhere between hourly and daily um, with, their, with their update capabilities. But you know, certainly with News Desk, you can do a near real-time um, update as well. Which is so cool. Very And with Nexus, set, for example, if you set up an alert using Analyzer, when the alert arrives in your email, the chart is the body of the email itself. And so each day, you're receiving an updated chart. So you're, you, you're able to build out a very nice um, bit of accretional knowledge um, delivered to your email. And, that, and those charts can be shared internally, they can be, and they can be shared externally as well. So Nexus Analyzer, um, and the, uh, for example, you could post those charts using uh, the unique URL um, and have an update on your public-facing website um, so that your customers, your stakeholders, um, have the ability to look at how things are trending um, as well. And that's another area where certainly we, we're trying to address a big market need, which is the ability to share insights and share ideas without violating um, copyright. Right, right. All right, well, last call for questions out there. Bobby, thank you so much for um, sure. 
sharing this information with us mm -hmm. again. Um, and as a reminder to all, we did record this session, and I will be distributing it um, via email uh, probably tomorrow. So keep, a, keep an eye out for that. All right. Well, that will wrap up our session today. Thanks again um, to everyone who could come out. Um, if you would like to see a private tour of any of the solutions we talked about today, or if you have any further questions that you'd like answered in more of a one-on-one -on -one basis, go ahead and send me an email. It's mary.frerix at lexisnexus.com. I will send that email address out uh, via chat in a moment. All right. Thanks, everyone.